are solutions. Na baada ya kuwa na tumaini tunahitaji suluhisho. And we need the power to implement those solutions. Na tukishakuwa na suluhisho tunahitaji nguvu ya kutekeleza hayo masuluhisho. So this is the time to be creative and to dream of a different and a better future. Kwa hiyo hichi ni kipindi cha kuwa na natumaini na kuwa na kulenga kuwa na kesho ambayo ni nzuri. So poverty steals our hope. Umasikini unachukua tumaini letu. It takes our souls and our dreams away. Inachukua nafsi zetu na ndoto zetu pamoja. It puts stress on our communities, our families, and our bodies. Natuletea shida katika familia zetu, jamii zetu na mii yetu. But women play a very important role in ending poverty, and so and our children are also our future. Lakini wanawake ni sehemu ya muhimu sana katika kumaliza tatizo la umasikini na watoto wetu kuwa na kesho ile kwanza. So women are strong. Wanawake ni wana nguvu. Women are resourceful and creative. Wanawake pia wana rasilimali nyingi na pia ni wavunifu. And women think they think of the entire picture. Wanawake hawawezi kwa ajili yao wenyewe, wanawaza pia kwa ajili ya watu wengine. When women are and our children, when women and our children are allowed to reach their full potential, the world will reach its full potential too. Kama wanawake watapewa nafasi au wataruhusiwa kuonesha kile kilichoko ndani yao, hata dunia pia itafikia kile kiwango cha kuonesha kile kilichoko ndani yao. So according to the United Nations, Africa is the only region in the world where more women than men choose to become entrepreneurs. Na kutokana na takwimu za umoja wa mataifa yaonyesha kwamba ukanda wa Afrika wanawake ndio wamejitolea zaidi kuwa wajasiria mali zaidi kuliko wanaume. And women from rural areas who work in agriculture have proven skills in managing the natural resources. Na wanawake hasa wanaotokea maeneo ya vijijini ambao ni wakulima wameonesha uwezo wao mzuri wa kupambana na hali zote za kimazingira. And women's agricultural practices which means how they plant, how they fertilize, how they replant the land, how they keep bees. They have an impact on your country's natural resources and on the health of your land. Wanawake kupitia shughuli zao za za kikulima ambao ni pamoja na kuweka mbolea, kupanda, kutunza nyuki, wameleta matokeo mazuri katika mazingira yetu na kuleta na kurejesha afya ya mazingira na afya yetu. We are all impacted by our changing climate. Women who work with the land know the effects of drought, of floods, of forest fires. Sisi wote tunajua kwamba ni waathirika wa mabadiliko ya tabia nchi. Na hivyo tunajua matokeo ya mazingira ni pamoja na njaa, mafuriko na moto unaotoka kusitini. These issues cause 
food scarcity and they contribute to poverty. Na ili swala linapelekea uhaba wa chakula na linapelekea pia umasikini. So here are some important questions. Hapa kuna maswali ya muhimu. What are the solutions that will safeguard our environment and the health of our land? Ni lipi suluhisho ambalo litaweka salama mazingira yetu pamoja na ardhi yetu? How do we raise healthy children who are safe, educated and happy? Ni kwa jinsi gani tunaweza tukalea watoto ambao wana afya njema, wana elimu na ambao hawana matatizo? And what issues do we need to overcome to empower women and to end poverty and hunger? Ni vitu gani ambavyo tunavihitaji ili tuweze kushinda katika kuwawezesha wanawake kumaliza swala la umasikini pamoja na njaa? So the first thing we are going to talk about is gender equality. Na kitu cha kwanza ambacho tunaenda kuongelea the United Nations has developed a set of what they call sustainable development goals. And one of their goals for the entire world is gender equality for women and girls. Na moja ya malengo yao ni usawa wa kijinsia na sasa kwa wanawake na wasichana. So first, na kwanza, women need the opportunity to have positions of power in the community. Wanawake wanahitaji fursa ya kuwa na nafasi za uongozi katika jamii. Their voices need to be heard in making the laws and policies that concern them and the environment. And we need to prepare our daughters for positions of power in the future. Tunahitaji kuandaa mabinti zetu kwa ajili ya nafasi za uongozi kwa siku za baadaye. Women also need to be able to own land and property, especially if they're going to take such good care of it. Na kama basi wanawake wanahitaji kuangalia mazingira yao, lazima wawe na haki ya kumiliki ardhi. And women need more access to both infrastructure and technology. Wanawake pia wanahitaji kufikia miundo miundo mbinu mizuri pamoja na tehama nzuri. This means women and children need access to safe transportation. Wanahitaji kusafiri ambao ni salama. We need access to the internet. Internet. We need to be able to get micro loans to start businesses. We need computer training. And we need access to the markets so we can sell what we make or what we grow. Children, especially the young girls, need access to education and skill training. So how do we keep girls in school? How do we get more women training? So that we can all have economic empowerment. Next, we're going to 
Let's talk about some of the barriers that women and girls face that make empowerment difficult. Sasa tunaenda kuongelea vizuizi ambavyo vinaweza kusababisha uwezesho au kuwezesha wanawake kuwa wagumu. The first one is gender violence. Kitu cha kwanza ni ukatili wa kijinsia. Women and girls are vulnerable to rape and to physical violence. Wanawake ni rahisi sana kupitia mambo ya kubakwa na ukatili wa mwili. And no woman or girl should ever be hit or violated. Na hakuna mwanamke ambaye au msichana ambaye anatakiwa kufanywa hivyo. And let's teach our sons that this is wrong and should end with their generation. Tunaomba tuwafundishe watoto wetu wa kiume kwamba hichi kitu sio sahihi na kinatakiwa kiishe katika kizazi hichi. Next, women and children face healthcare issues. Wanawake pamoja na watoto wanapitia changamoto za afya. So for women, there is what's called maternal mortality. Uh, katika kwa upande wa wanawake wana kitu, kuna kitu kinaitwa vifo vya kabla ya wakati vya wanawake. This is the risks women face in childbirth and pregnancy. Haya ni matatizo ambayo wanawake wanayapitia kipindi cha utunzaji wa watoto mwanzoni. And women need prenatal care and safe health care while they're giving birth to their children. Kwa hiyo wanawake wanahitaji matunzo kipindi cha wanapojifungua na wanapokuwa wanaenda kujifungua. Women face issues of family planning. Wanawake pia wana changamoto ya uzazi wa mpango. How to space our children apart and how many children are safe for us to have. Ni kwa jinsi gani tunaweza kuwa na muda wa kuwa na kati ya mtoto mmoja na mwingine na idadi ya watoto wanaotakiwa. Women and children face the healthcare issues like HIV and AIDS. Wanawake na watoto pia wanapitia changamoto kama swala la virusi vya ukimwi pamoja na malaria. Yeah, and malaria and the need especially we face the need that we all need clean drinking water. So for our children, we need to look at infant mortality. And this is the percent of babies who die du during or shortly after birth. Na hii ni asilimia ya watoto ambao wanakufa wakati wanapozaliwa au kabla au wakati mfupi baada ya kuzaliwa. Babies need vaccinations. Watoto wanahitaji chanjo, clean water, maji masafi and good nutrition. Na chakula kizuri. According to the United Nations, there are more women and children suffering from poverty and food scarcity kutokana na takwimu za umoja wa mataifa inaonyesha kwamba wanawake na watoto wanapitia changamoto kubwa ya umaskini na ukosefu au kumuko wa chakula alafu baadaye wanafuatia wanaume okay. so everything that i have discussed so far are big problems kila kitu ambacho nimekiongelea ni And in our country, we have a funny saying. Na katika nchi yetu tuna 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 hivi. You must eat an elephant. Kama, then, kama, <laughs> then you must eat it one bite 
at a time. Kwa hiyo tunatakiwa kula kipande kimoja kwa wakati. But we don't eat elephants. Lakini sisi hatuli tembo. So what this saying means? Na hii kitu inamaanisha nini? Is that to solve a big problem. Ni kwa ajili ya kusuluhisha tatizo kubwa. You have to use many small steps until it's gone. Unatakiwa utumie hatua hatua. So Good Foundations International has come to Dongobesh to offer you some small solutions. Kwa hiyo shirika letu limekuja hapa Dongobesh kwa ajili ya kuleta baadhi ya suluhisho. And these solutions We offer you hope and and support through five through five training projects. Kwa hiyo tutatoa masolution haya kupitia miradi mitano ya kufundisha. The first project mradi wa kwanza will be sewing cloth sanitary napkins. Tutakuwa tunashona zile nepi za watoto. If we can sew these washable cloth napkins, we can help keep girls in school during their time of menstruation. Kama tunaweza kushona zile nepi au zile pads ni zitasaidia wadada wakiwa kwenye siku zao wanapokuwa shuleni. And women can more easily leave their home to do some work. Na pia anaweza kaendelea na shughuli zake zingine. And cloth napkins or the sanitary napkins because they are washable are also better for the environment. Na tunapendele hiyo kwa sababu unazo kavi fuwa na nzuri kwa mazingira pia. Our second project Mradi wa pili is sewing washable baby diapers. Ni kwa jili ya kushona zile pampasi za watoto. They are also better for the environment na zenyewe pia ni nzuri kwa mazingira yetu than the plastic diapers kuliko zile za plastiki my wish how yangu is that women who like to sew will start to sew the sanitary napkins and the diapers and start a small business kwa hiyo hamu yangu ni kuona kwamba wale wa mama ambao wangependelea kushona waanze kushona zile taulo za kike na baadaye waweze kushona zile za watoto na wazitumie kwa kuingiza kipato chao. So, project number three. Mradi wa tatu. We talked about healthcare issues for women and children. Tumeongea kwa habari ya huduma za afya kwa watoto na wanawake. And washing our hands is important to prevent illness. Na kuosha mikono yetu ni kitu cha muhimu sana kwa ajili ya afya zetu. We are going to learn to make our own bar soap. Tunaenda kujifunza kutengeneza sabuni za miche au za mpando. And the fourth project. Mradi wa nne is about making skin skin uh skin cream from oil and beeswax. Tunaenda kutengeneza mafuta ya kupaka ya ngozi kutoka kwenye mita ya ya asali. So I understand that women in the area keep bees. Tunajua kwamba wanawake wa eneo hili wanafuga nyuki. And I hope the women can use the beeswax from their bees to make this skin cream. Kwa hiyo najua pia wanaweza kutumia hizo eh nta za nyuki kutengeneza hayo mafuta. And the last project na mradi wa mwisho is making a mosquito repellent out of plants and herbs that grow in your communities. Ni kutengeneza zile dawa au kemikali ambazo zinazuia mbu kwenye mazingira yetu ambayo tutatengeneza kutoka kwenye mimea ambayo inatuzunguka. I hope that this simple method of making mosquito repellent fights malaria just a little bit. Naamini kwamba 
Hili swala ni swala ambalo linawezekana kufanyika. Okay. So those are the five projects that we will be doing this week. Kwa hiyo hii ndio miradi mitano ambayo tutakuwa tukifanya wiki hii. I have one more topic. Ninayo mada nyingine moja. And that is the Good Foundations International works to get people access to clean water. Kwamba Good International Foundation, Good Foundation International inafanya ina, inatoa huduma ya kuelimisha watu kutengeneza maji masafi. We teach a community how to make clay filters. Tunafundisha jamii zetu kutengeneza machujio ya kisasa. And each of these filters, every household gets a filter to put their family's water through. Na haya machujio ya maji tutakuwa tuna yatapatikana kwa kila familia na yatakuwa kitumika kuchuja maji kwa ajili ya kile kile. We have an open session I later in this week and I hope that we can come together and talk about issues of clean water and talk about the potential for building filters in your community. Kwa hiyo baadaye katika wiki hii tutapata muda wa kufundishana kwa sehemu ya wazi na kuonesha umuhimu wa kufanya hivyo kwenye mazingira yetu. Thank you. 